Can't stop, won't stop. Welcome to uh, this very special uh, anti USA July the fifth special and our first episode of five for summer series of film movie series or whatever I called it last week. The su- the series of summer film series. Movie summer movies. Just yeah, the summer of summer movie series. Yeah, I think is what it was. Lots of S's. Um, so we decided to. We were going to originally do. The, uh, we're doing. Uh, Born on the Fourth of July. Uh, it's Oliver Stone giving a giant fuck you to the uh, Vietnam War via a real, very real book by a very real person by Roy Kovic, who uh, was very, um, very stoked to go to the Vietnam War when it was his time, and then came back and basically they treated him like a dog, and yeah. What were you going to say? He came back with a new frame of mind. Well, not at first. At first, he came back and was still on the side of the government and the, the military and the Marines. But slowly, the cold, uh, the cold reality set in that the government around the 1960s really stopped caring. The American government, specifically, really stopped caring about their troops. And the war in Vietnam wasn't you know respect to fallen soldiers i don't, I don't want to be disrespectful or anything but does the government actually care about anyone other than the government no um this is kind of a hard watch you know what i mean like it's not a fun, fun time no, it's. Uh, I watched it this afternoon. Actually, it was very emotionally draining. Yeah. Um, but good, very good. I. It's a very like. It's going to be one of my higher rated movies. I really appreciate that Oliver Stone um, leaves a lot in the details, mm-hmm. and he lets he lets scenes really play out, and he doesn't just cut to the next thing. Tom Cruise, so the movie did win an Academy Award for Best Directing in 1990, but I don't get why Tom Cruise didn't win an award for this movie. He was... Who was the other? Like, you know what the other, who the other people were? Let me see. Let me take a look, because... If I were to guess, it was too real. Or, like, you know what I mean? Like, and also, like, it's kind of like not to say bashing, you know, American government, like you were saying, but, like, I'm sure that kind of helped not get very many votes or whatever. Yeah, I mean, Oliver Stone has been very... All his films are pretty pretty divisive for people. Um, he, keeps he, he keeps it very real, and that's what people don't like, I think. I think giving the best direction, they were throwing him a bone. I mean, hands down, the movie is very well directed. It's very well shot. I watched it. I watched the. Uh, it's not on any streaming service. I assume I you own it. It was recently on Netflix, and I was going to watch it yesterday, and fucking it wasn't there anymore. I was like, oh shit. Pirate. Had to had to do a little bit of this action, yeah. But I did find a Blu-ray copy, and it didn't have that gross like when they upscale old movies to for Blu-ray. It still looked like an old movie, uh, which kind of helped it maintain the integrity of feeling like a period piece. Yeah, yeah. And movies are kind of going back towards that now. When you watch movies that are set in you know, the sixties, fifties, forties, you really get, they put, they put a bit of that film grain on it and they really, I wonder it's, I wonder if, if you could do this movie now, if it would look too polished. Cause this movie is like, this movie has some real grit in it. 
And it, like, like we said at the top of the show, like, fuck, man, I was emotionally just drained. I have questions. Okay. I have questions. I, um, so, in also, we're in the midst of you know cancel Canada Day. Like, you know, we just had Canada Day last week, July first. It's kind of, also it's kind of interesting Canada Day and and Independence Day or whatever are pretty close to each other. I don't know that that's just kind of interesting. But like, you know, Canada is a pretty well respected country, but we're still you know far from perfect, and have a lot of you know skeletons in our closet, and you know with what's going on with those like um like those the, the grave sites or whatever right and um like i feel like part of me feels like don't we all watch movies don't we all get this message when are we gonna like when is the stupid bullshit gonna stop in the world like, don't we all share the same feelings when we see this shit? Like, this is fucked up? No. No, because the that end scene where he goes to the, the RNC and there's just fucking Republican conservative just, just like, Nixon, Nixon was kind of a Trump in that time. Yeah. You know, he was crooked, he was an idiot, and he was just fucking everything up. Um, invading Vietnam was the, one of the like, you know, America had this proud history of, like, going in and, and, you know, helping when they needed to. But this particular war has always gone, like, gone down in the history books as one that they lost and didn't really have any right to go in there. And they went for the wrong reasons, you know. And it it kind of, that's where things kind of change in history and people start waking up. Because right around the same time, like they mentioned a little bit in the movie, but like the Black Panthers start to, to rise, and the the vets and the, the the teenagers who didn't go to war are starting to rise up against the government and start asking questions. And they really they represented that well. And you see you, you see Roy Kovic go from like, you know, it's the mid '60s. He's like the all he, as a kid in the you know he's an all star baseball player, little Rest- league player, oh, and awesome. then. About the wrestling, do you know anything about like that the Roman Greco wrestling or whatever, like that kind of school? A little bit. So, like, because I they started, or at least the part when it showed it, like they started where one guy already had like Tom Cruise, like kind of from the side. Like, what's up with that? I think uh, I think you get advantage. Oh, okay. Each round, you go back and forth. Possibly, I'm not 100 percent sure on that. I, I was wondering that too. But um, he's basically Captain America. Yeah, like he he's he's like I'm gonna go. Okay, parents, you know I'm gonna fight for my country. And when he comes back, his brother gets into it. His brother is like, you know, I don't believe in the war and this and that. And you, they share a look at the beginning. His bro, his little brother looks at him like you. That don't you could see it then, and they do a lot of that in this movie where they'll foreshadow something. And then later in the movie, it'll happen directly to him. Like the first thing I noticed was when they're at that first, at the very beginning of the movie, we're at that, they're at that first parade and the veterans are coming down and the firecrackers are going off, but the firecracker sounds are replaced with gunshot sounds. And they're like flinching. The, that yeah, same thing yeah. happens to him when he's he, going right. through his, when he does his parade. Yeah. The, the actual Ron Kovic was one of the, he had like a cameo in that first parade, he was one of the soldiers. Um, okay. Rinsing at the firecrackers or whatever. And yeah, I noticed that too, when, when, when crew, when Tom was doing his parade thing and they had the fireworks and he was like wincing at it and that sort of thing, like, you know, kind of just remembering, you know, PTSD or whatever kind of thing. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it, it was, uh, I knew it was a heavy movie, but it was, it was heavier than I was anticipating for like a lazy Sunday after. Like I, I always planned on watching it the day that we filmed. If we had it done yesterday, I would have watched it yesterday. Yeah. But I, I like to watch a movie and then talk about it almost immediately after. I do that with uh, the, with my Blossom Buddies podcast as well. And yeah, the hour in between finishing the movie and 
actually starting up the podcast was very like very introspective about things. Um, I didn't. I think it's an important movie, especially for Americans to watch. Yeah. And and as as Canadians, it it kind of affirms some suspicions we already have about blind American patriotism and. Like we haven't, I was thinking about this during the war, during the movie and, and North America hasn't really had a war to like, we got to go fight. We haven't really had that since like nine eleven, And that war was even stupider and, and more chaotic than, than I would say Vietnam because all of it top to bottom is just completely insane. At least, well, I mean, I, I'm I'm a conspiracy theorist uh, with a, <laughs> like I really the that whole thing is too it's too coincidental. Like every like all the shit that was going on, like they were doing drills. They were doing drills that were exactly like a 9/11 uh, uh, scenario, and right. then also happening. Just there's just a lot of a lot of fucked up shit just intertwined with 9/11. I, so I'm still kind of a, and you know my apologies for, you know any hearts broken, but I I I I, nine eleven I think I feel was, it what people actually think who did it isn't actually who did it or whatever right like or as far as like blaming, you know, uh, fucking what's his face Osama or whatever, right? And I'm you know I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but uh, the whole situation was very fishy. Uh, there's no denying that Al Qaeda was, you know, torturing and killing people at the same time. Uh, and, you know, sending death threats to the United States. Um, but the, you know, they're the conspiracy theorists are you like, well, they, you know, us was after oil. They had to go into, Iraq and Afghanistan and you know there's all these you know it goes back to like the Gulf War too like there's a lot of a lot of stuff to unpack in a movie podcast which I don't think we're going to get get to into my point was is this movie felt a lot like Generation Kill did you watch that show no you would really enjoy it it's by the guy who did The Wire cool and it's like a six or ten part uh, mini series, and it was clearly very inspired by this movie, like the war scene in the movie, uh, because it does that. It, it has those very real, like action moments. You know, I think Saving Private Ryan has a similar thing at the beginning, like the opening to that movie where they where they land. It has that where the camera is going all over the place, and you're seeing all these really horrific shots. Yeah. Um. And it's kind of got a similar vibe to this movie where it's like these kids are over there and they don't really, they're fighting for a country that doesn't give a shit about them. They're, that's the thing. Kids, right? Like they're, they're like blindly following like, patriotic, like, and they're like, they're coming from a good place, but it's not for a good reason. Right? No, no. I, it was a little bit like I looked up how old Tom Cruise was when he made this movie. Man, Tom Cruise and, like doesn't age, man. He, like, he still looks the same, basically. That's true, but he just he, he got to twenty seven years old and stopped aging because I think that's how old he is in this movie, and he's playing a eight, seventeen or eighteen year old for most of it. Yeah, I think you have to be eighteen to go to war. Don't you? Yeah. Yeah, but he's fresh out of high school, so he's yeah. just 18. Um, and it was kind of interesting that we got the fairy tale ending in the at the end of the first act. You know, he uh, runs to the place and kisses the girl at the end of a coming of age movie. Yeah. And the next scene is his wor the worst day of his life. Yeah. Which is brilliant, brilliant storytelling. Because I was like, this movie's not so bad. Yeah. It did, yeah, it, it went up and down a lot. And uh, every time something a little bit good would happen, 
like something horrible would happen or or like even even at the beginning when he's like in high school and he's talking about like I want to go to the war every you know people are looking at each other like you get these really candid looks yeah. that are really well acted by the background people that are look that are like you get the sense that even though there's this mu- this nice music and all the patriotism and it's it's the 4th of July you keep getting hit in the face and reminded with little little acting choices or little like direction fr- from background characters it, I haven't seen anything like this you know well I, you know sorry go ahead I was going to say the score also helped add to the yeah, and there was no, I don't think there was a real song in the movie until the, who they go to the Nightmare Hospital. Uh, I think, just, like, during the parade, like, they had, like, the little song during the parade or whatever, but yeah. But, like, a real, like, pop, oh, pop right. song. Right, gotcha. Yeah. 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 And Br- Brown Eyed Girl starts playing, and that's usually used in movies for, as, like, either ro- a romantic bit or a comedy bit. And the comedy bit was, like, one of the most disgusting graphic. It was like that that whole hospital bit was played for comedy but very graphic. Yeah. And very gross. Yeah. Which was really off putting too. Uh I literally want to just go and watch every Oliver Stone movie because I think I've only seen The Doors. Oh man. That's the only Oliver Stone movie I know. Fucking I watched The Doors the other day. Uh, Oliver Stone, and then he had that he had that little cameo. Uh, in the movie where he was on the like the newscast or whatever it was. Um, yeah, he's a reporter, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The um, I uh, I'm pretty sure, it, like, I mean, I know Quentin does little cameos, and Nice Shyamalan has done little cameos in his things. Like, I I would like if ever I made a movie, I would do like a little cameo as well for sure. Some little offbeat. Like just, not, and Mitch Shyamalan, I think, I think he's done a he's done a bit role in every one of his movies. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's if I was directing, I would I would put myself. I would be more of a Taika Waititi though. I'd probably put, give myself like a pretty big role. What What did you say? What What? Taika, Taika Waititi, the the guy who made uh, into the. Uh, he directed Thor Ragnarok, and right. he's he's was, the guy behind. He's the guy behind. Sorry. Did he give himself a cameo in Thor Ragnarok? He plays Korg. Oh, okay. Um, he's in. He's the guy that created what we do in the shadows, and he's in the movie version of that. Mm-hmm. Um. He he's the unofficial third uh, flight of the Concord. He like directed all of their stuff. Oh really? Yeah, he's buddies with them. That's cool. They're so from New Zealand, mate. Hey, mate. Uh, so I did pull up the 1990 Academy Awards. Hey, um, who who's Tom going up against? Tom Cruise for fourth, born on the fourth of July, was up against. Uh, Kenneth Branagh, Morgan Freeman for Driving Miss Daisy, Kenneth Branagh for Henry V, Robin Williams, that's <laughs> a stacked, for Dead Poet Society. This yeah. is a fucking huge that's, year. This is a and the, yeah, and the winner, and this makes perfect sense, and how could anybody beat this man? Daniel Day-Lewis for My Left Foot. I never saw it. I think that's like as about I I don't I can't remember if it, it might be a drug movie I can't remember what my left foot is about but uh, it's I know it's super heavy I'm gonna Google that really quickly so I don't sound like an idiot <laughs> I uh, I haven't seen too much like I, I keep like I you know Daniel Day Lewis gets a lot Daniel Day Lewis gets a lot of praise um, I've seen Gangs of New York. I've seen uh, There Will Be Blood. That movie is fucking amazing. Yeah. I think he was uh, The Last of the Mohegans, I think. Last of the Mohegans. Oh, sorry. It's not a drug movie. It's a real movie. It's an autobiography about a guy with cerebral, cere- cerebral palsy, and he learns to paint 
uh, and right with his only control over, controllable limb, which is his left foot. No way. Yeah, which is, uh, I remember that from when I was a kid. So, yeah, that, it makes sense that Tom Cruise didn't win, but it's like how Leonardo DiCaprio gets, gets shafted every year because he's up against other crazy good actors. Yeah. And now that now that Leo has finally won, he won the Academy Award for uh, for the Revenant. The, it was the Revenant. Yeah. Because the year before that was Wolf of Wall Street, and everybody lost it. Lost it because he didn't win. Yeah. Didn't and then win. the next year he won for the Revenant. Yeah. Leo kills all his parts for sure. Uh, I watched Revenant. It definitely not a bad movie, but like, I don't think that's the one that should have got him the award. Like, no offense. I think it was just the, the, the Academy is such a dumb thing that they were like, let's just give it to him. Well, me personally, I don't give, like, and I've said this with, like, at work and shit, where they're like, you know, because they tell us about, oh, you know, they, they give us our, our, our accolades or whatever, right? Like, you know, oh, this person said this about you, or, oh, you, you achieved this or whatever. I'm like, I don't care. Like, that shit, that, like, me, like, not uh, discredited or anything, but it just, it doesn't mean anything. Like, I do have concern. I do fun and take care of my clients, and that's it. Like, I, if I, you know, I don't need an award for it. I, I just think that's kind of like, I don't know, superficial or whatever. Yeah, and especially the longer, like the longer the Academy Awards go on, and the more uh, uh, people of color and foreign movies are snubbed and stuff, it it becomes more of like a you know rich white people patting themselves on the back for well, their fucking popularity contest. Yeah, whatever kind of thing. Like, it really doesn't mean shit to me. If the people that like it like it, that's all that really matters for me, right? Like, if I, as far as like creating art or something, right? Like. As long as people, like, the people that like it, like it, that's fine. Oh. Yeah, exactly. I have a um, question for you. Okay. It's tough. Okay. Would you rather be severely injured or killed? I was thinking about that during this movie, because uh, if you don't know, if, you, if you're watching this kind of, Find wait, what happens to Jin born on the 4th of July? Basically, he goes to war, and on a second tour, he immediately gets shot in the foot, and then you're like, oh, shit, well, that's not so bad. And then as he's, like, scrambling around, he gets shot, like, through the chest, through his spine. And right. it just it shatters two of his... Irreplaceably, it shatters two of his, uh, his spinal columns. Um, fellow uh, comrade or whatever. And uh, that was done. The one thing that was done for the movie, like for the movie, that was that didn't actually happen or whatever, was when he went to visit the family of uh, the the kid that he and um, I guess in so that part didn't actually happen in real life. Like he 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 addressed the family, I think, in a in a in a, um, a memoir or something in a book or something. Like that. No, we're talking about two different things right now. I'm talking about the crux of the mo his. Like his journey, right? Uh, right. He gets shot right before that. He does friendly fire a guy. He goes to tell his sergeant. The sergeant's like, "La la 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 la! I don't need that shit right now." <laughs> that would happen. No, the bad guy did it. Yeah, he's like, "We're we're not we're not doing that." And he's trying to like. This was another. This is a different time where like men couldn't like express themselves so when he gets back and he's losing his mind he's trying to like to try to tell people this shit he, he's so programmed to just not express himself that he's like you know he's having that conversation with his buddy who's talking about you know he's like well i saw some shit while we were over there and he's like well we don't talk about it. he's like why can't we talk about it and then later, well, when Willem Dafoe comes into it, Willem Dafoe's just, like, saying all of it. Like, he's just, fuck. he's so fucked. Fuck it. Willem Dafoe also, you know what? Does Willem Dafoe get enough appreciation? Like, he kills it in everything he does, too. Um, yeah. Boondock Saints is probably one of my favorite characters of his. Dude, The Lighthouse? I haven't seen it yet. Is it good? 
Oh my god, watch the lighthouse. If you want if you wanna buy uh Robert Pattinson as a legitimate actor, watch yeah. Good Time and watch The Lighthouse and you'll forget all about Twilight. I, I mean, yeah, I know him yeah, but like that's what I like that's the person that comes to mind when I hear his name is Twilight. He did good in Tenet. Um did you see Tenet? Yeah, he was good in Tenet. He did good in Tenet. I he was the best part about Tenet, actually. I didn't like that movie. Uh, and he was, but he was, every time he was on screen, I was going through my Robert Pattinson phase when, when we watched that movie last year. We watched yeah. it like right at, right on New Year's Eve, I think. And I, every time he popped up, I was like, yeah, that's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I, I, I am a little excited to see how his take on Batman. Um, Me too. I, I see. No, I haven't seen Good Times. I'm pretty sure that's on Netty. Um, I haven't seen The Lighthouse yet. I did watch. Uh, fuck, what's it called? He's in another movie, space or space thing, Half Life or something like that. I forget what it's called. Anyway, it's all good. Robert Pattinson's a good actor. Like Twilight aside, and I'm pretty sure he did. Like I, I may have. There, was, I'm pretty sure I let that play in the background when I watched everything else that I wanted to watch on Nitty, like, you know, a year or two ago or whatever, two years ago, whatever it was. Um, I don't know. It was fucking what it was. Like, he, he... So, did, so we're jumping around a little bit here. You asked me a question, if, uh, if and then I wanted to explain for the viewer what we were talking about. Uh, so since, since Roy got shot and had to live his life paralyzed from Ron, the right? pecs down, from the chest down, um, I would say I would r rather live in today's day and age, but with hindsight, I don't know if I would say I would rather live because of how shitty it seemed to be for him. Yeah, he he spent that time in triage. The guy read him. Read, the priest comes and reads him his last rites before they even like look at him. He's like, "Oh, I'm gonna die now." Then they save him. Then he spends all this time, he's told he'll never walk again, he spends all this time in, like, the worst condition military hospital I've ever seen put on film. And then he's like, I want to I want to walk again, so I'm going to try extra hard to, like, use these canes. And then he wipes out and gets a compound fracture on his, in his thigh, yeah, which was fucking disgusting, but and very well done. It was so graphic, and, like, I hate that kind of gore. But you have to give credit where credit is due when something from the 80s looks that that practical effect looked very realistic. Yeah. Um, so if I had the hindsight, if, if I knew that's what my life would be like, I don't know if I kind of would probably be in the same boat as him and wish that I would have just left I, the mortal coil the day I got shot. But, you know, in this day and age... I would want to live because there's a very good chance you get like a robot bottom half now. <laughs> 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 or at least a, some sort of exoskeleton like device. I could, I, I definitely like empathize with, you know, that character, like when he was going through that shit and just drinking and fuck, like, you know, fucking, you know, talk to his mom about, you know, you know, this is who you believe in God. I don't believe in him. He only had to go through three days. I have to live with this for the rest of my life. Like I, like I, I, I would definitely have would have a hard time trying to like, you know, find positive or whatever. Right? He didn't have a choice. You know, he thought he was dead on that field, and his buddy just like tripped over him basically and saw that he was still alive and threw him on a on a med medvac medevac helicopter. Yeah. So it, it's like on the one hand, fate intervened if you believe in that sort of thing uh, uh on the other hand it's like fuck you you should just like look at this life he leads for most of the movie um and how, how do you pin things uh we're talking about born on the fourth of july i don't know we haven't figured out we haven't figured that out yet what if i what if i do a thing here what if i tap on the screen you, you tap on things i'm gonna i'm gonna say some facts or whatever I'm gonna okay say, um uh, so we talked about how Kovic had a little cameo. Um, uh, Al Pacino almost played Ron Kovac. Kovic. Uh, uh, Charlie Sheen 
uh, I guess him and what's his face, Oliver Stone. Uh, I forget what movie they worked on. They worked on a movie previous to this, and then he thought he had the role, uh, just kind of like, you know, assumed or whatever. Uh, Sean mm -hmm. and Nicolas Cage were also considered. Uh, oh, this one, this was really interesting. Oliver Stone found a nerve agent that would temporarily paralyze Cruz for a few days. Uh, so, like, you know, get into the role or whatever. But the insurance company, like, wouldn't allow it. I believe that. Which makes sense. That's... But his, he was able to do it in a very believable way. Yeah. He, he... I was really blown away by how well he did with that, that aspect of it. He he lived or like he he like he he uh, definitely threw himself in the role like he was like using a wheelchair like for a majority of like like pro like to prepare and whatever. Mm hmm. So apparently, I hear I check this out. What did you do? Google how to pin things. Yeah. Keep talking. <laughs> all, right, all right. What else we got? Uh, oh, actually, this this is pretty cool. And I'm always curious how this works. But uh, Oliver Stone and Cruz took a pay cut um, um, to basically get the movie made. And then they got, like, a percentage of the profits or whatever. Oh, look, you figured it out. It's pinned now. So now what, hey, what we'll do. This one? Hey, did you see this one? We forgot to do that at the top of the show. We were so depressed. <laughs> Not the movie for the jokes. No, it's not. I was gonna make a joke about how I'm drinking this uh, this Bud Light, this Bud Light strawberry lemonade because it's like some bullshit you buy on Fourth of July. But I didn't think it would really be uh... sponsored by Bud Light lemonade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. What? You get a so when the movie first starts, you you start to hear the beginning of the score, and it kind of sounded like. Terminator 2 for a second. Do you know why? Probably because of the same composer. It's John Williams. Nice. Star Wars. Ooh. I don't I'm think... Not, did not, he do Terminator? Whenever you hear a Danny Elfman um, uh, like, you know, tune or whatever, you ought, you can ought, like you can just pick it out instantly. Ooh, Danny Elfman. Right. Yes. That's uh, That's true. Um, and the same thing is for John Williams because his are always, yeah, he he didn't do the music for Terminator. But uh, as as soon as I heard that, I was it's an '80s movie, so the fucking um, credits you have to watch a whole credit segment. Yeah. Um, what is this person saying? <laughs> He's telling jokes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, thanks for watching. Uh, we appreciate the comedy. You hear the one about the corduroy hat? They're making headlines everywhere. I got it. Cause... Corduroy. Yeah, and for somebody like me with a large forehead, I'd have just... You ever fall asleep on a cor corduroy pillow? Check out this forehead. Check out this butt. <laughs> hey, did you see this five head? <laughs> Um, sorry, what were you saying? I got distracted. Um, music. We talked about, we were talking about composers. Right. I'm, I'm just checking to see if, uh, Terminator 2 was John Williams. I don't think it was, though. That is a picture of James Cameron. I don't care. <laughs> uh, what, so one thing, I, like, I mean, I, like, I dislike, I don't know. So, mo like, when movies play credit, like, like you have a scene and then you also have credits at the same time. Like, you know, when you have credits at the beginning of the movie or whatever, like, I don't like it. I like it when it works. If it's like a per like, okay. if it's like a person walking through the desert and it the de that desert pertains to the movie, I think the cell was like that, where she's, like, exercising the kid. And yeah. the credits were happening. I was like, "That's fine," but in this, that's always the case though. And then sometimes, like it's just like so. If you have empty space, 
like on the stream, like then it it, it it it's not it doesn't like take away as much or whatever. But like, I just I don't know. So I find it kind of annoying. It reminds me of television. It's okay, because the opening of Speed was just inside the elevator shaft. It's just like the fucking inner workings of the elevator shaft. So like words, elevator shaft, sweet. For speed. I don't think I've ever watched Speed all the way through. What? Okay. We'll we'll talk about this later, but we need a we'll talk about we'll talk about the 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 movies of fall or whatever. I'm pretty sure that was as, as summer blockbuster as it gets though. Yeah, it probably was. <laughs> so, um Okay, we got about twenty minutes still on the on the old clock or Rooney. I'm just gonna you have any other Get any other facts? Um, no, we talked about how, like you said, like he, like the first parade, they were wincing, and then he wins. We talked about that. Um, oh, what, the other thing I wrote down was uh, <laughs> when they're at the like high school dance or whatever, and they're all like making out, but like in a weird way, like or what? Like it was just like heavy, like just like. <laughs> When I was in high junior high and high school, I never got to. Well, actually, no, because the teachers made you stand like two, like as far as your whole arms, yeah, and hands on the shoulders only, yeah, or like upper, like not on the hip and not on the side of the breast. Yeah. In this d- particular prom, everybody was fisting each other on the dance floor up to the elbow. <laughs> Sorry, I need to bring some levity because I've been bummed out for the last couple of hours. <laughs> oh, man. Because well, of the movie? How was uh, yeah. you have a long weekend or anything? How you been, man? Uh, I was off. I've been off since Thursday. I had took five days off. Nice. There was a break. For Canada Day, we went to the park, but we weren't celebrating Canada Day. We were just celebrating a day that we had oh. off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then that, as soon as the sun went down, we were surrounded by fireworks. So it was like, saw some, saw some pretty inappropriate fireworks. What do you mean by inappropriate? The, like penis shape? No, like this wasn't the year. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then on top of that, it was all rich. It was where the rich people live at the, at the waterfront of Toronto. And, but then on top of that, there was like this park behind where we were sitting and and like there was the park and the apartment buildings kind of were on one side of it and they were shooting fireworks off in this park and i'm like right next to an apartment building this seems really dumb seems like a really bad idea to do this not just for like fire safety yeah. but like children pets. people with ptsd pets it's one thing when you're like out in the middle of a field, but when the city makes an ordinance to allow people to have straight up fireworks, it's and I feel like a lot of money spent on it too. Like, yeah, oh yeah, I'm big time. Find better ways of spending. Well, yeah. I don't think the city. I don't think Toronto actually did a, their own fireworks display. This was just rich people shooting off their own fireworks downtown. Yeah. So, so I had the day off as well, and uh, I went to Kearney Lake and and um, I have this like little water hammock kind of thing, and so I was floating around, and then um, when I was ready to call it quits, I started like climbing out. I didn't go to where the I didn't go to the beach part of Kearney Lake though. I just kind of hopped in at the side, of the boat. and so when I was climbing out. I ended up slipping on a wet rock and sliced my foot foot open and, uh, you know, got seven stitches. What? Yeah. You sliced yourself open bad enough to go have to get stitches. I was going to walk it off, but everyone was like, uh, you sh- it looks a little deep. You should probably go get a checkup. And there was like, have you ever seen, have you ever seen any of those like surgery shows or whatever? And then and you can see like the fat tissue underneath the skin. There's yeah, that means he hang out of the thing, right? Yeah, that means you gotta you gotta get a stitch. <laughs> I cut myself. I cut myself cooking one time this finger to the bone. Ooh. 
Ooh, and finished yeah. and finished service, and then went and spent. Fuck, man, I'm from Halifax, as you are. How long did you spend waiting? Five, five hours. Five hours, yeah. It was seven hours, and that was. Those are uh, both of our stories are on the low end. Yeah. Um. And, and like this was on Canada Day. It like uh, it, it took like half an hour for the guy. Like the 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 worst part of it all. They had to freeze it so that they could stitch it up. And I don't remember. I, I, I've had stitches. Well, real stitches. Like, but these were real, right? Like, normally, recently, like, now they do these trips or whatever they're called. Uh, but so, like, he had to give me freezing so that it up. And he had to stick the needle in the cut. It was the worst, the worst, the worst. I had that when I was a kid. I, uh, it was summertime and we were playing slide down the muddy hill on our knees and I got bad. I got bashed real bad. Um, I didn't feel it at all. It was such a, must've been a piece of flint or something, but my, I stand up and my friends are looking at me and I've got this fucking seven inch gash on my leg. Uh, but then when they took me, I'll never forget it. I was young enough that like, I, if it, this didn't happen, I, probably wouldn't remember any of it because I only remember the the most vivid part was when they were putting the freezing in and they went in like had to go in like sideways into the like yeah the meat anyway also now it's like I look at that part of my leg and where my shin is and like normal well no I still get the scar but the but the shin like I remember it being looking very deep and then I look at that part of my leg. I'm like, how the fuck could it possibly be that deep? What? Did it hurt anything, or does it just kind of look like... It's like thing? straight up and down, but on right on the shin. Not like shin bone. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe when it happened, it was like before my body fully... Like I was eight years old. That, that, could, be, that's probably, that could have something to do with it. Like you're, So it could have moved around. over. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, and then 4th of July was yesterday, and all I did yesterday was uh, procrastinate playing video games. I procrastinate, like, I, I kept being like, I'm going to play something, and then I just kept watching TikToks. <laughs> How? How? I don't understand. TikTok is so annoying. <laughs> I send TikToks to you. You, you did. You said. You said. I, I saw the message uh, earlier today. I, I haven't checked them out yet. But like. So, for anybody that's interested in getting into watching TikToks, you go on the. For, there's like following and then for you. You use the for you page and you just scroll until you see something you like, and you double tap on it, and then the 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 algorithm remembers that you liked that. So then then you keep scrolling and then you see something else you like or gives you a chuckle or I like to just sometimes like things that I can tell have been put like a lot of effort's been put in. Yeah. You know? So then it shows me other things that have people have put a lot of effort into. I get a lot of like stand up and a lot of like comedy and a lot of like you know like that's and, and it didn't take very long it doesn't take very long for the algorithm to just take over. My, you just my, gonna... my my opposition or whatever to that type of algorithm is, well, yeah, okay, cool, but what about how am I supposed to find other things that I don't know I like yet or whatever? You know what I mean? Like so with Netflix, oh. like I you know I luckily I I fucking rich like everyone like um you know I'll, I'll once in a while I'll see something random like okay what the fuck is this um. And I think that kind of helps it, you know, have a more broader whatever. But, like, I was thinking about that. I was like, well, like, stop showing me things that, like, okay, I already have this. I want it again. I want something different. There's a Discover page. Yeah. So if you go on the Discover page and scroll through that, you'll see different, like, it'll show you different things that are trending. And I don't really like that because it, it's never going to, like, the trending stuff is not stuff that I'm going to want to see it's all like teenagers doing dances and and you know for instance it, you know it's an american app so that that trending page would have all been fourth of july i thought it was chinese 
Well, we see the American. We see the American home. We see the American side of it. Right. Okay. Gotcha. You can download Chinese TikTok, and you know, see it the way that people in China see it. But it's it's not quite geo locked, but it's kind of like the same idea as like how Netflix is different everywhere, or YouTube. Some stuff okay. is available here and not. Yeah. In the states and vice versa. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, we have about we have about five or ten minutes left here. I think we should give our sort of final thoughts. Um, if you have any more questions about Twitter, please comment on this video. Or sorry, TikTok. If you want to give if you want to give Kalen some advice about TikTok, I think he might. I think it might be hopeless for him. <laughs> I'm just I'm just joking. Um, but. Uh, I can millionaire off my tick, my TikTok. <laughs> you should start making them. Maybe we'll become a millionaire off TikTok. So uh, overall, I really, really like. I don't know how I've never seen this movie. I feel like people. <laughs> yeah. I knew what movie it was. I knew it's the movie where Tom Cruise fucking plays a, a vet and it's based on a book and it's an Oliver Stone thing. I knew all that, but I didn't know. I I kind of put it in the same category. I didn't put a lot of thought into it. I didn't put a lot of thinking effort into it. I kind of thought it was one of those like, you know, early Tom Cruise movies that are just kind of whatever, you know, they have their audience. Like, Top Gun has its audience. Cocktail has its audience. I thought it was just another one of those. But My, this... Quentin Tarantino's breakdown of Top Gun is... And I, I think it's in a movie. I forget. I'm pretty sure it's a scene from a movie. And it's fucking hilarious. What movie? Uh, let me see if I can find it. Um, keep saying what you're saying. So, I, yeah. I, as I was saying, I just feel like it's it's an important movie. Um, I've never, I, I've, I, I'm sure it's more complicated than just why, but I've never been sure why the U S went to, um, Vietnam. Um, I agree with you. Uh, I, I, it, it does seem like a very, it, it is, it is a very important movie. It's, uh, it, it's an eye opening, uh, movie. It, you know, it, it you know, put certain issues on the table, uh, so to speak. Um, it's it is a hard watch though. Like it's. Um... Okay, so okay, North. Yeah, this is what I thought. So North Vietnam was super communist, and they were fighting South Vietnam, which was an ally of the United States and the U S went over there and tried to swing their dicks around. But unfortunately communist Vietnam wasn't above using human shields and guerrilla warfare, uh, and hiding guns in villages and that kind of crazy shit, which is disgusting it's its own problem, but the U.S. was thought they were going to a regular battlefield like they had done in the last few wars, the last couple wars. And also, World War II, like I was saying, felt very much like the axis, the axis of evil, the Nazis and the you know and the fascists against the uh, the Allies, which all had a hand in taking down the Nazis. You know, so they were probably like, this will be fine. We'll take our ridiculous, we'll take our ridiculous armed forces over there. We'll mow the place down or whatever needs to be done. We'll get by communism. But now we know that communism is all propaganda. And like communism isn't bad if it's like, it's not fundamentally bad. It's the way it's used. Yeah. Um, anything like i've been i've been trying to say this my whole life like so fire like just to just to give a general like metaphor or whatever fire can heat your home or it can burn it down it's all depends on how 
fire itself is not a bad thing how it's used. Same with like, that's true. That's like basically anything, right? Yeah, uh, that's also, true. The movie in regards to the Quentin Tarantino, thing, the Top Gun is uh, Sleep with Me, which I don't think I've seen. No, that uh, that doesn't sound like one I've even really heard of. That's that's awesome. So, I'm gonna give this movie just because it affected me so much. I'm going to give it a 4.5 and I I would give it a five, but I don't, I don't think it is a five, but that being said, it didn't have any real long drawn out bits. I don't know if it could have been better. Maybe if it was less based on a true story and more of a, more of a, a broader, like a broader take. This was more the story of, one guy who like peaked <laughs> in little league and then just suffered a life of a, of losses. Yeah. Like he, that, that, that wrestling scene where he almost wins the big wrestling match, but lo- ultimately loses. Yeah. is sort of a metaphor for all of uh, everything that happens to him in his life that going forward, he's always like the all American boy, the fucking, you know, the, the goody two shoes going to do right by his family and his country, but then <clears throat> loses the big wrestling match, gets shot and paralyzed, like uh, isn't able to walk again. Uh, you know, all the shit that happens in Mexico. That's really weird. and Messed up. He finally, like, it sucks that it didn't happen in real life, that he went and talked to the family yeah. But that redemption bit was probably the best thing that happened to him since he, since, you know, the worst thing that ever happened to him was him. He shot his, he friendly fired a guy and then got shot minutes later yeah, or the next day or whatever. So that's how, yeah, I'm going to give it a 4.5. It's a really solid movie. I think everybody should watch it. Could have explored, it could have explored. I thought it felt like, Forrest Gump was a light retelling of this movie. Yeah, Did you... I, I, I a similar feeling with uh, Lieutenant Dan. Yeah, yeah, and and the girl that he sees in the bar that he asks to go to Mexico. Her name's Jenny, and she seems like a partier. Oh, and no, you I... know, there could be you could probably do one of those like Reddit like fan theory crossovers to make these two movies be in the same universe. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it felt like I was watching just like the way darker focused on if Forrest Gump was Lieutenant Dan story and he doesn't actually do all he, he, Forrest Gump is sort of him about being there for all these like major moments in history. This is like he's not there for any major moments in history. He's there except for like the protest bit. Yeah. But Forrest Gump never goes to any protests. He's fucking pro war to the end. Uh, he's dumb. <laughs> not not pro war. He just kind of you know, just goes with the flow sort of or whatever. Like yeah. like, sort of whatever. Yeah. Um, it, it's definitely an important movie. Um And I I definitely like heavy movies. So I'm like I need to be in the right mood for them or whatever. But it's it's not like like ooh I got to go watch this movie thing. Um, but like no, it's definitely an important movie. Definitely a well made movie. Um, I think if we were judging it on something else other than being a movie, I would you know potentially give it a five. Um, but just as a movie, like to you know to kind of think about all the movies that I enjoy watching, right? Like one of the main reasons why I watch movies is for enjoyment. And so to kind of have that kind of element in the grading of it all, um, I'm going to give it, I'll, I'll give it, I'll give it a four. I'll give it a four. Yeah. Nice. Um, I usually like to write down if, it, if you find it hard to come up with a, like a rating for the movie at the end, after we've talked about it and 
if you don't like i feel i don't check rotten tomatoes or anything before i come up with my own rating so i'm not influenced so if you ever feel like if you ever feel like that's happening when we get to this point in the show i would recommend just writing down what you think about it before like after you watch the movie and then adjust later i just don't i don't want you know what i mean because if we went in the opposite order i already had mine locked in so i i I, i'm concerned that we're going to influence each other fair but yeah originally i was going to give it a high three like 3.8 ish but it is an important movie i agree with you there it is i think some that should be seen um it, it, it's not it's not entertaining like it's it's not entertainment though right do you know what i mean like it's yeah yeah of- who is this movie for you know yeah that's a good, that's a good question it's like an important movie you go see in the theaters it, it was probably a cultural event when it came out you know what i mean it was probably one of those movies that's like you gotta go see it you're gonna have a bad time but you should see this movie, and let's the Academy Award winners are always like that. Yeah, it's going to so they've eyes to you know different, 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 different ways of thought, different you know uh, perspectives. That said, that said though, a movie like Parasite uh, is an no. enjoyable, entertaining watch, even though it is. Oh, I watched, I I watched it, and uh, <laughs> I didn't have subtitles, so I have no idea what they were saying. But I knew what was going on, and it. But you was- still got it, yeah. Yeah, that happened to me with District Nine. So, but and I thought the gimmick of the movie was that you were supposed to just sort of get what the aliens were saying. Yeah. But <laughs> but later on, I would find out that no, no, there are su- the aliens are subtitled through that whole movie. Anyway, those have been a couple. Those are, those are some other movies we should talk about potentially doing, but. Uh, this has been another, this is a special start of the summer movie series, summer of summer movie series um, uh, for, I guess, keep it locked to my Instagram until we get our, our own Instagrams sort of set up. But I think hey. I have, I think we, I think keeping, uh, keeping it on here is the best, the, the best thing to do for now. Um, but yeah, for, uh, for, uh, for my man, Kalen, I'm Jason. And for this guy up here, Jason, I'm Kellen. And, uh, hey, hey, did you see this one? Oh, hey, did you see this one? Hey, did you see this one? (laughs) 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 Bye, bye everyone. Have a beautiful time.